My name is Michael Lewis. Mainly what I do for a living, though not exclusively, is write books. I got my start uh, writing true, true stories with my first book. It was called Liar's Poker. It was set right where we were sitting, in, down on Wall Street. And it was about my three years of working for a firm that no longer exists called Solomon Books. And it was while writing this book that I figured out how to do what I do for a living. And the book itself launched my career because it sold a million copies. What we're doing is revisiting this past. It's now, what is it, 32 years ago when I was working down here. We're revisiting this past for the purpose of kind of relaunching the book as an audiobook. This is one New York plaza where Solomon Brothers, when it existed, used to be. This is where I first came to work in 1984, and where Liar, or 85 rather, uh, and where Liar's Poker started. The training class was up here on like the 27th floor, and the trading floor, the famous Solomon Brothers trading floor, was up at the top on the 42nd floor. And this, back then, felt like the absolute dead center of Wall Street. I mean, there was a stock exchange way up there, but it was irrelevant compared to this place. When I, when I started on that floor, they were making more money than all of the rest of Wall Street combined. And it was where everybody wanted to be. My first time I was here was my first day of work. It was the first day of, of the training program. And I was probably already taking notes in my head for what would be Liar's Poker. I mean, I didn't know I was gonna write a book, but I had this sense that this was a very odd experience I was having. From about day one at Solomon Brothers, you realized that this was like the last place you wanted to be. That the, the real money was not made here, and it had nothing to do with the stock market. It was back on that trading floor at one New York Plaza. The minute you got here, there was this disconnect between what the world thought Wall Street was and what it actually was. What it actually was, was bond traders and, and people creating derivatives and uh, people doing stuff that nobody outside of Wall Street understood. That's, so that's kind of where the action was. And that was intoxicating when you were like 23 years old because you realized after about two weeks that you were on the inside and all this stuff was kind of on the periphery on the outside. That there was a real inside that the whole world didn't know about. Uh, and you'd been let in. The big benefit of creating a podcast to go along with the audiobook is you can explore questions about the book that you have that you can't explore in the book itself. I have a folder that we discovered when we started reading Liar's Poker for an audiobook. Uh, and the folder has on it all the titles I thought of for Liar's Poker, and they are horrendous. But one of them wasn't so bad, and it was other people's money. And so we used that for the, for the podcast. I mean, what's happening in the book is for the first time, these Wall Street risk takers are playing not with their own money, not with partnership capital, but with shareholder money. And it changes their behavior changes their behavior in, in ways we, you know, that led to a financial crisis. Uh, but that, that was kind of that, that sense of I get the gains, that, but you get the losses kind of thing. Uh, it runs right through the book. And so it, it, was, it, it was a title that could have worked. There's no question that the aptitude for selling stuff to people on Wall Street is at least a cousin of the aptitude for writing and writing stories. You're creating narratives, you're creating a reality for the other person. You may not realize that's what you're doing, but that's what you're doing. And if you have an ability to create that reality, a persuasive reality, uh, you'll succeed on Wall Street and you'll succeed as a writer. I don't read my reviews anymore, but the first reviews I read of Liar's Poker. And there was a review in the New York Times book review where the guy said, the reason this book works is the same reason Michael Lewis succeeded at Solomon Brothers, is he can spin a yarn. And, uh, and he, he kind of made the connection. Uh, and I thought, yeah, that's right. That's, that's, there, there's some truth to that.